Now, have you ever wanted to press one of these before? Yes. Yeah? Alright, do it. Do it. No! Okay, no one knows that was us. Let's go start coning off the individual zones. This gas station actually has three emergency switches. We have an e-stop button on this panel and a reset button. It's powering itself in an endless feedback loop. A little nervous. I'm just hoping we don't cause a huge traffic disaster. Just shut it down and just make it right. Oopsie! Oh! Alright, so let me know in the comments. How many of you think this is gonna work right away when I turn it on? We're gonna be staying here for eight days looking for ghosts. I am ascending into the mysterious attic. <laughs> okay, so this gas station actually has three emergency switches. This is the e-stop panel. We got an emergency stop button, a reset, and then we have one of these in here. We have one on the outside of this building and then one on the inside of the actual gas station building. I've drawn this up. Check this out and I'll explain this as best as I can. We have a relay that is in the on position. You can see from the light. That relay sends power to three of these contactors which control the individual pumps. We have this relay. This is the relay. Now for the relay to be powered it needs 120 volts across the coil so this part's easy this is the neutral that completes the circuit this goes back to back to the panel board in the next room over this is the white wire and it hits these contactors see the wire in the very back of the contactor how it has red and white wire that's the coil of the contactor so that's the thing you send power to to make the contactor actually suck in and the wires landed in front of them are the actual load that's being switched that's off and then being switched on when power is applied to those. So I hope that makes sense. You'll have a lot of a ton of experience with contactors with us. And if you watch my videos, we have uh, an e-stop button on this panel and a reset button. So right now we have 120 coming from this wire right here. That's this question mark here. And it goes through the normally closed emergency switch. So it's carrying the power all the way to this or this point, as you can see. And what that does is it carries power through here. And from here, this is a normally open contact. And right now the relay is in the on position, which means that in this point are touching, which means that the 120 is being carried all the way over here across this bridge because it's powered and then powering these three terminals. So right now, the 120 is being carried through here and actually into its own coil, thus powering itself, thus making it remain in the closed position because the relay is on. There's power here. It's basically powering itself in an endless feedback loop. You know what I mean? The power is being sent through one of its contacts to its own coil. Hmm. Now what happens is when you press the emergency stop button right here, this normally closed button, you when you press it in, it opens the circuit. So you press this in, it opens this circuit. 120 is no longer being sent through here just while you press it. In the process of pressing it, it opens the circuit. And before you're even done letting go, the power, the electricity stops going through this contact and to its own coil. And since there's no electricity in the coil, the relay turns off. And because it turns off, these are no longer connected and therefore once you release the emergency stop button there's power all the way up to here but it's no longer powering itself this is called an interlock because once this button is pressed and that electricity stops for even a second it's no longer going through and powering its coil and closing this and therefore it's not getting power to the coil anyways it's an endless cycle so how do you fix that well there's a reset button that is normally open and so you have power coming through here, right? Now that your e-stop button, now that you've released it, you're not pressing it in again, it has voltage up to, basically up to this terminal, but it's not going through anything, right? So you press the reset button, it sends this 120 through this line directly to the coil and to all these, which causes the relay to then close again. And then once you release the reset button, there is now power going through here and then powering its own coil. So again, that's an interlock. What that, what that does is it's a way of having something basically permanently on until you press a button, press and release a button, and then it turns off until you press a different reset button to reset it. We have this mystery wire that may just come from the breaker, I think, but hopefully I don't need my words on that. 
And then you have this mystery one, this red one here, that also goes down into the conduit to a mystery place somewhere out there. This is receiving 120 because all these contactors are powered. See how it's sucked in. And like I said, the relay's on. So right now, let's talk about the state we're in right now. Power is going through here. This coil is powered and therefore the contacts are closed. Therefore the 120 is coming through here, going through the coil of these three contactors and then out to somewhere else. This e-stop must be in series with the other e-stops. Mm -hmm. So what I would guess is that this goes to the other three e-stops in the building that are all normally closed. Oh, okay. And then now we have our question mark moved over here. So the idea behind this is everything is in series. So if you press the e-stop on either one of these, it disrupts the circuit. Exactly. Pretty cool. From a different e-stop, it goes to the breaker. At some point we have our breaker in a panel, right? I guess that's kind of a shitty breaker. The idea is that at some point we have our breaker and then this goes back to the neutral of the panel. And then where this goes, for all we know, this red wire might go into there and it might do some other logic that also shuts down these pumps. If we do go forward with shutting down the pumps to this gas station guy was telling auntie over there and just shutting it all down so we can work on it, We'll find out because we'll press this e-stop button and all six of these contactors will, pop out. will shut down and then people will be very angry out there. Oh. The question you might be asking is, is it possible to turn the circuit off without interrupting power to this right here? Unfortunately, once you shut off that breaker, then it's <clears> all gonna... Exactly. We should find this circuit this guy right here, we should turn it off and we should start replacing switches. But we need a plan with that first to make sure it goes as, as smooth as possible. We're gonna have to replace this whole thing. This will have to come off the lock nut. This will go on top. See this little press button like that? It has these little contacts on them for normally closed stuff. We will all put those in, we'll do that together. These are for uh, lights on this and we don't have the circuit for that. So these will just be cut short or whatever, capped off. And then after that, we're gonna focus on getting these wired in first and then everything turned back on. And then after that, we can work on putting these on like this on the outside. Here's the inside one. Now, I almost don't wanna replace this one because it looks like it's in such great shape. Look at that, that looks so nice in there. And then here's the one that goes outside. I don't even have provisions to do this one because there's no lock nut on the inside attaching it to the wall. See, there's no, nothing in there. So there's no means for me to even swap this one out. So I think we're just going to ignore this one. It's in great shape. If they want to mention it and say that they want this one changed as well, then that's totally fine. I'll come out and do it. This one, as you can see, does have a lock nut in there. You can take your knife, slice around here, undo the lock nut, and then take this box off, knock this out. All the I know this is kind of ugly. Put the lock nut around that one, and then you can mount this to that. So the thing is, you're too green for me to have you do one while I do the other. So we'll just do one at a time together and you can assist me. But let's go get these fuel stations turned off. All right, Jaden, have you ever wanted to press one of these before? Yes. Yeah? All right, do it. Do it. No! <laughs> you scared the fuck out of me. <laughs> oh, I can't believe it. You were, you were like about to smack that thing. I think I did. Yeah. Hmm. Oops. Oh. Oh. <laughs> um. Okay, no one knows that was us. Uh, let's go start coning off the individual zones and make it more official. Man, you pressed that button fast, holy crap. Whew. I'm a little nervous. I'm just hoping we don't cause a huge traffic disaster. Okay, E stop control. We have that up, but guaranteed that's it. Let's see. Yeah. Okay, uh, this is off. I'm just gonna get to work on it, you know? Why mess with the controls? Just shut it down and just make it right. This kit comes with these little jumpers. They basically have these little uh, spade terminals and they plug into here. Now you can see from the side, it says normally closed, normally open. I'm gonna plug in common here, normally closed. We're gonna take this apart. The fastest way to do it. It's gonna just be cut and it's normally closed. So it's like, I don't need to worry about which one's which or anything like that. I'm just gonna put it on there. 
Yeah, I'm gonna take this sign off for now. <laughs> Oops. Oopsie. Oh. What's behind my mask? Another mask. <laughs> that is, that's hilarious. I don't know if you to catch on camera. I did. So you we'll can see we have this screw. nipple here. We can leave that ground screw. Attach this here. Tool tight. I'll throw a level on it. You know, why not? Why not? I guess it'd be level, right? <laughs> now that I have these loose ends here, I'm gonna strip the ends. Still getting used to these new strippers that go up to number eight. Mm -hmm. The ground wire I'm going to land on the ground screw that comes with this exterior rated weatherproof box. My new switch. So we just put this on. Oh, it is going. So we got that. Now, this is going to go on top. It barely is wide enough, but there barely is deep enough. But that is fine. We're going to do this later. We're going to go get that other switch up and running so that we can turn the pumps back on. Let's do it. I okay. Now, where is it here? Put it in. Uh, 10 more minutes. 10 more minutes? Yeah. This goes there. Uh, basically, this is like that. basically how it looks so that's what they wanted <laughs> all right so let me know in the comments how many of you think this is going to work right away when i turn it on and that there's not going to be some weird problem with it i made sure that the other one is pushed out that one is also pushed out let's turn this e-stop control on None of the other ones I turned off and was messing around with are still off. Okay, so we are in the emergency stop position. Now, if any of this shit that I explained earlier makes any sense, then if I press this button, these should all come on. Ready for this? There we go. Cherry. Okay, Jaden is removing the cones. I think everything's working. Oh shoot, you know, I do need to test it. So, one more time. And reset, okay. I'm happy with that. There's not a lot of, you can mess up on a normally closed switch. Yeah. All right, well, like I said, it's what they wanted. So, a little cheesy in my opinion, but it'll work. We are off to the middle of nowhere on a road to a place that is famous for the road to the place. Checking out a new potential job as well as installing another booster pump and filtration system. Our visit today has been cut short because the guy just locked us in. We're going to be staying here for eight days looking for ghosts. Yeah, this will be interesting. We want to make sure we can go through the attic. I'm just kidding. What? All right, I am ascending.